as you are able to, in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we share uh, the gospel lesson beginning 24th verse, 6th chapter of John. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it, was, it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. May God bless this reading to our understanding. You may be seated. I am the bread of life, Jesus said. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's, that's very interesting. But if, if we don't really believe that Jesus is the bread of life, it doesn't it do us any good. <laughs> I think uh, there's probably many in this room who might be saying to themselves today, believing in Jesus is nice, but I believe in money. <laughs> it takes money to do anything, right? Without money, I'm sunk. It's ironic, I think, in our world's culture that one of the images, one of the words for money is bread. <laughs> Give me some bread, man, right? Or dough, right? I, went, I need some dough. Yeah. Isn't that ironic? Jesus said, I am bread, man. <laughs> and I believe Jesus is better than money. But what is money? It's, it's paper, right? Or it's, it's metal. It's a piece of, it's a round thing of metal. Or it's, it's a, a plastic card you, you put through a machine. Or maybe it has a fancy little chip on it, right? That goes into cyberspace somewhere and gets you what you want, you think. Unless you don't have money in the bank, right? Well, the word money has an interesting history. Uh, in Roman mythology, Juno Regina was the wife of Jupiter, the queen of the heavens. She protected women. She was their savior. She was the war goddess, the moon goddess, and most importantly, the goddess of warning. So when her temple on the Capitoline Hill was the mint for all of the coins of Rome, and she was called Juna Monita. Monita derived from Latin monio, which means to warn. A word that means to warn. This was evolved into an old French monnaie and eventually into our English word money. I now note that rooted in the word money, is warning. Jesus gave many warnings to people about making money God and making their God money. 
because it is so easy to make a thing that you can see that you can touch for the moment <laughs> into your God <laughs> there was a uh, very rich man who had this wonderful estate and fabulous barns and and all kinds of crops and he had this tree up on the hill that was so beautiful and it had lots of shade and so he decided to, to move that tree closer to the house just outside his window so he could read in the shade of that tree. And he said to a friend one day, he said, what could God do if he had money? <laughs> What could God do if he had money? Well, money, there's no way you could have money without God, right? Where do you get the energy to work? Where do you get anything? <laughs> All of the things we see are from God. Everything at your work was created by God. The wood that created, made that, that building, the bricks, all came from God. There would be no money without God, right? But we seem to think that God is money, and money is God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Think about the things that money can buy. Well, they can buy things I, I can eat. <laughs> How long does that last, right? You've eaten it, okay. <laughs> it's gone. How about um, what happens when you buy a thing? What happens to that thing? Sometimes it gets lost. Sometimes it can be burned. Sometimes it can be stolen. And whose money will it be when you die? And when will that? And those things that you thought were so great that you bought with your money, where will they be? And whose will they be when you die? Why do we make money such a great thing in our culture? Why is it such a God for us? Well, what Jesus has to offer is forever. Life, the bread of life, the essential life that we need. The things that last, like companionship, like love, like joy and peace, like a relationship we long for that's gonna be there, like respect. All of those things that we desperately want and long for, Jesus is. God is. That's real bread. That's real food. That's the food that lasts forever. You know, I, I think it's no coincidence that, that Jesus chose that image of bread. And, and when it came to the Last Supper, he used bread. Because it is common, isn't it? I mean, most of our meals our bread. I mean, there's some bread in there. My wife probably wouldn't have supper without bread. I mean, that's sorry. That just would never happen. Um, and so in a sense, we can, can almost have communion every meal. I think that was very wise of Jesus because he wants us to remember him, not just on a first Sunday of the month when we have communion, but every day. Because he is the bread of life. Our lives. So when we eat bread and communion, he says, remember me, Jesus said. I am the bread. My body that is broken for you. See, Jesus' body was broken so he could heal our broken bodies. So he could heal our broken spirits. So he could draw us back into fellowship and 
Help us know what life is. See, I want to I encourage you to recognize and, re, and realize that without Christ, you have no life. I'm sorry. You have no life. You think you might, but what kind of life do you really have without Jesus? Not one that will last. Oh, maybe a few years. A few minutes. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite prayers kind of comes from a, uh, a saying in uh, Star Wars. It was the very first Star Wars movie. And Princess Leia says, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. And so I say, Help me, Jesus. You're my only hope. You're my only hope. You're my only life. You're my only bread. You are the only hope we have. So as you come to share in communion today, I pray that you will let Jesus live through you. As you consume that bread, that you will let his life in to you. And realize that he is with you every day, every moment, not just this few moments we share in communion. He's the bread of life, of everyday life. The only life there is for us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we remember how on the night that you were betrayed, your very last night on this earth, you took bread, you blessed it and broke it, gave it to your followers and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Remember me when you eat this. And you also took the cup after supper. You gave it to your followers and you said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. You literally gave your blood for us. You gave your life so that we could live. So Lord, let this bread and this juice be for us your body, your blood, that we might be for the world your life, your real life, the only life that's going to last forever. And we praise you in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I invite you to come.